that I have a bone to said, pick with let's you. Let's talk basketball. I got a bone to pick with Bonte. You think Debo had a bone to pick with uh, <laughs> Jake Moody? Well, well, what happened there? Before we go to the lines, here's Debo uh, Samuel <laughs> on what happened with Moody and Tabor Pepper, won. the long snapper. <laughs> No, man, um, normally I don't even get like that, but just like frustrated in the heat of battle, you know, um, really close game. And, you know, um, I kind of got out of character a little bit, but, you know, um, I'll talk to Moody and, you know, we'll get past it. And that's just that he had a final chance to make a game with afterwards. What about it? How, what, how nice was it that he had that chance to well, I think he had a little. I think he had a little dog in him, you know, a little motivation to go out there and uh, make the field goal. When I was talking to him at, at first, like, I wasn't saying nothing, like, crazy to him. I was just, you know, kind of frustrated him at the time, but... You know, um, he went out there and won the game before us, and, you know, um, he wasn't bothered by it, so, you know, we moved faster. So that's Debo's version of the story. Here is Tabor Pepper, the longtime long snapper of the San Francisco 49ers. You know, he was telling him to lock in, and we know what our job is, and we, we got us. You know, it's it's hard being a specialist. It's, uh, sometimes it's feast or famine, and... Um, as a young developing specialist like Jake is, uh, the best like mental exercise you can have. I mean, I don't know how much better it gets than missing three straight and having to step up and hit a almost 50 yard game winner. So I'm super proud of Jake. So that's Taper Pepper. And I got so many thoughts on that sound by the load. He said, it's not easy being a specialist. Well, some may say you don't have to practice or hand or do anything during practice. You're just snapping, snapping, snapping. Now it's not a, easy job. I'm not going to sit here and poo-poo on kicking field goals from 50 and 55 and punting and snapping. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to sit here and do a sugarcoat job. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to say it's easy and it is feast or famine. But the casual fan sees that, hey, you don't practice much. You're basically chilling. You play about seven snaps a game. We expect you to do your job at a high level. Like, Let's also acknowledge it wasn't one missed field goal. It was three. It wasn't two. It was three. <laughs> it was three. I mean, Bunty, three. I mean, it's like, it, again, I'm a believer in creative tension, right? In, in any work, especially the high pressure, high paid jobs. Like, I, I, it's okay. Like, things do happen in the heat of quote unquote professional sports, and, you know, stuff, stuff happens. Is it a great look? No, right? Do I think Debo's the worst teammate of all time? No, but. Yeah, of course. Ideally, I wouldn't want my, you know, high-paid wide receiver going after my kicker. But also, kicker, make a kick. Like, I, I kind of get yeah. it. Like, make a play. Like, come on, dog. Debo's make a like, play. lock in. Like, lock I kind of see both sides of this. Now, do I think Debo said lock in? No, I don't think he said lock in. Make a freaky kick, you think I, he I, said? I mean, something of that effect. And <laughs> if you are a Niner fan, you are thinking the same thing. All right? Now, but, right. but this is where, like, Winning is the great deodorant. And now, what do you do moving forward? It's one thing if two guys have a scuffle, okay? Right. Like, can the team just move on? Can Debo yeah. move on? Can they find a way to amicably move on? Like, that's really they all that will. matters. And, and Shanahan said after the game. That's really all that matters. Shanahan said after the game. I expect them to get this going. They'll be fine. Uh, here's what Shanahan said about the scuffle, actually. I don't have much of a, a take because I didn't see any of it, so I just got told about it. But uh, probably an obvious one. Guys frustrated, and something probably happened, and you know, brother scuffle a little bit. I didn't see any of it, so I don't know how bad it was, but something I'm not too worried about. We'll fix it. If it hasn't been fixed already, we'll fix it on the plane, and we'll go back to loving each other tomorrow. Now, I don't believe the fact that he hadn't seen it before he went to the presser. Maybe he hadn't. Maybe he hadn't. Who I knows? don't know. Who knows? But, but I will say this. But he did say that they're going to fix it on him. But at least the plane ride. By the time they land or landed in San Jose yeah. last night, it was fixed. It was by Gosby, by Gosby, sure. won a game. Yeah, I'm sure on that one. Now, now from, from Jake Moody's standpoint, if you've ever played sports and, like, you're making mistakes, baseball, you're making errors or you're grooving pitches or whatever it is, and basketball, you're just missing shots, you can't defend someone, and someone comes over and they're like, come on, man, make a play or, or whatever. It's like, you don't think I'm trying to make a play? You, you think I'm, I'm actively trying to miss, like – but but sometimes you do need to be waking up that mm -hmm. way. And and trust me, we've all had that teammate right. that lets you know when you're struggling. So I, I just think this is what like, right. again, it's it's not ideal, it's not a great look, but to think that this doesn't happen in the heat of battle, that's naive. Yep. No, I, no I think doubt. it's naive. No doubt, no doubt. Uh you could be the Dallas Cowboys where CeeDee Lamb is talking about the how the Cowboys need to put up curtains in the stadium. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones, this is funny. Jerry Jones after the game was like, we do know where the damn sun's going to be at our old stadium. Then he goes, well, he goes, why not put up somebody asked him, why not put up curtains? He goes, well, let's just tear the damn stadium down and build another one. You kidding me? <laughs> but, but you know, it's funny, though. It is funny. Whether it's Levi's, whether it's Dallas Stadium. How do you spend billions of dollars to build a stadium and not think of the basics? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe we should cover our sidelines from getting blasted with scorching hot Santa Clara heat during the September and October months. I don't know, maybe maybe we shouldn't have glare as our wide receiver well, is coming across the end zone. There ain't nothing you can do about it. a simple pass. Like, well, how, how are you spending b -b 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 billions <laughs> on this and you don't think about these things? Well, Lamb said, they asked him, would he be a favor of curtains? He goes, yeah. Yes, 1,000 percent. Will they bring it up to Jerry Jones? He goes, I mean, y'all are doing my job right now. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry yeah, I Jones, love what, loser, bro. Uh, oh, stop. I, I, I love. Hey, so anyway, anyway, that's what's going on with that. Let me see. Um, uh, 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 uh there was something else I saw. Oh, nine two five, Bonte, can you snap or kick it? Can you snap or kick it? Give that hat to Joe. It's too small for that big head. So that's the nine two five trying to make a joke. Now, quietly, Shasky, my second year playing Pop Warner, junior uh -huh. major San Francisco Seahawks. Mm -hmm. Coach Greg Isom, Coach Paul Berger, I hope you guys are doing well out there. I was a long snapper. I snapped out punts. I snapped out field goals. Oh. It was a very tough job. A lot of ducks, a lot of quacks, a lot of wobbles. Snapping a shotgun. Not easy. I was a center, yes. <laughs> they couldn't find a spot for me. I was like, oh, this kid's nice. He comes to practice every day. Let, let, let him be the center for the team. And I was a center. My second year of Pop Warner football. So, no, I kind of know how hard it is to snap a football, especially on punts and field goals. It's not an easy job. After Moody missed the third one, I got a video from Michelle's side of the family, my niece, hitting a 35-yard field goal right here at SI. Obviously, no Megan, one running yeah, at her. Yeah, Megan one. splitting the uprights, and she's like, I should try out for the 49ers kicking job. Yeah, good luck with that, Megan. Good luck with that. <laughs> Rocky and Vallejo. Speaking of kicking, Rocky and Vallejo wants to talk about Jake Moody. What's up? What's up, man? What's up? Okay, so here's my take on Jake Moody. When they first drafted him, they said, hey, this guy has a big leg, big leg. You guys remember last year, obviously the kickoff rules were different. This guy could hardly get touchbacks last year. Obviously the rules changed this year, so he, you know, he can uh, get it uh, to, the, uh, to the point where we get some touchbacks now, but now he's missing field goals. This guy is a third-round draft pick. He missed the extra point in the Super Bowl. He missed that field goal against Cleveland. Uh, obviously, he missed the kick against the Rams. He uh, missed three kicks yesterday. You know what? This guy is basically, for a third-round pick, he's a bust. He's a bum. The, the, other, the, the other two kickers... Wait, 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 had, wait, wait. Rocky, real quick, real quick. I, I'll let you cook. Did you feel like that in the Super Bowl when he made the 250-plus yarders? Did I feel like that? Yeah, because he still missed the extra point. <laughs> you know, if he makes that extra point, it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> but he made the 50-plus you know? yard field yeah. goals, right? He's only missed four yeah, field goals this year, three yesterday. This is actually not bad. Yeah, 50, 50, Bonte, you know this better than me. 50 is the 40 from the 90s. He's, he's, you're supposed to make a 50 now uh, in this, this day and age. I hear you. Uh, uh, you know, these kickers, are, look at the Chiefs kicker. I forget the guy's name, but man, that guy is a beast. Yeah, you know, We drafted this guy in the third round, dude. Okay. Harrison Buckner, yeah, no, I hear you. So you want to cut him, Rocky, and Rocky's got, he just wants to cut Moody. Well, Anybody want to cut Moody? Because it's not going to happen. You know, you can want what you want to. You want to try out, this guy's got a good leg. He's got a good leg. He's got a strong and powerful leg when it comes to field goals. First game back, this one, what do you have, swollen ankle, high ankle sprain because you're, Covers team can't tackle anybody. So let me defend. Let me defend this this position. First drive, you have an opportunity for a fifty-seven yard field goal. If he's got a big, strong leg and he's back and he's healthy, mm -hmm. why are you not executing that field goal attempt there? Yeah, I'm just I'm yeah, just asking. I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't think a fifty-seven yarder is some gimme. I don't even know what. Well, the maybe his is. leg. They saw on pregame warmups that he was kicking and maybe said, okay, today his distance is going to be. We're going to cap it off at fifty-two. Okay. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, I have no idea. I, I hear you, but like I have no 85 idea. degree weather in Tampa, ball's gonna sail a little. It's yeah, gonna go. Maybe. Like I, I, I wow. I don't, like I don't that's know. a bad that's a bad sign. Well, no, I mean, it's fifty seven. It's early. It's first kick. You don't want his first kick coming back a month from now. And he all of a sudden misses a fifty seven yarder deal. What are we saying?
I'll get rid of this bub. It's a 57-yard kick. I mean, if you draft a guy in the third round, okay, well, I would expect him to be able to attempt a 57-yarder well, on the first drive of the game. After two weeks off, it's a bye week. I'm coming in, and, and I'm talking about the we, team as a whole. Like, don't I know. don't know. That's just Was my he 100%? Position. We don't know if he was 100%. Why is he suiting we don't know. up? But I don't know. Why is Christian McCaffrey suiting up? Why well, is he most set up? The MVP you know what I'm saying? Now I get healthy. it, but Moody's your kicker. You know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta make decisions here, roster decisions. We don't know which way the wind was blowing, going that direction uh, in the first quarter for the 49ers. We don't know. I, I, I would have – did Baldy watch him in pregame warm-ups? How was his pregame warm-up? Because that's what I want to know because they watch these kickers in pregame warm-up and they kick from the 40 to 50, wherever it is. And maybe, just maybe, they looked at his pregame warm-up saying, okay, today he's capping off at about 52, 53, 54. I have no idea. I have no idea what went through pregame warm-up, but they have a hell of a lot more intel than I do. So I'm going to trust their judgment on that 57-yarder to elect not to kick it. But they elected to kick for the 50-yarder when it was 4th and 6th in the fourth quarter. I thought to myself, just go for it. Just go for it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But I think what what, what the point of the caller was is, is twofold. Number one, like, if you have a kicker that you don't trust from 57 out, like— that well, is an issue. I think issue. they trust him. I just don't know the circumstances of the field. Raymond James Stadium. We don't know which way the wind was blowing. We don't know uh, whether know, or not he not, was making it for fifty-seven out there like Soldier that. You're not Soldier Field with thirty degree. Yeah, weather. but we don't know. I don't I know. Mean, what, I, don't I don't know, know what the temperatures I, were I just out there. That. And I don't know the, what the temperatures were. You've also invested were. a third round draft pick into him, a fourth round draft pick into Jake Moody, a fourth round draft pick into Jacob Cowan, who did have a nice return. You spent money in free agency on on George Odom. The bigger issue to me is that special teams, although you've actually invested in it has been a complete nightmare this year. I, I just don't know if Jake Moody was making them for 55 yard out in pregame warmups. What if he missed all of them? And Shanahan saw that saying, okay, he's not making them for 55 today. Then we're not going to kick him for 55 But, but if that's on. your algorithm, then on third and seven leading up to that to that fourth down and seven play, I would try to get three or four yards oh, knowing I'm kind of going for oh, it. Oh, I agree. I agree. I agree with that. But that's where Shanahan, and we, we haven't had the Shanahan conversation that wasn't a great Shanahan game. What did you think of the first half? I thought the first half was an absolute joke. I thought Purdy I thought was clock, high and late on a lot of throws. I thought he was Purdy, great in the second half. No, I thought Shanahan, if Purdy was not crisp in the first half, but Shanahan was off his rock at a clock management. Again, I, I just, oh, I don't, I don't, management. I don't. It's the same damn thing from Super Bowl 54. I'm immune to it. I don't even get outraged over clock management because you know it's happening. At some point, you know it's just a blunder's going to happen when it comes to the clock management. It just always does with this guy. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. I did notice some wrinkles that they threw in this week, and in, in the first half specifically, they did this thing that Miami does, where Ricky Pearsall would go in motion, and then I call it the Heinz Ward, where he shuffle, 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 right? Like, like you yeah. look like you're gonna block, and then he runs the quick out. They did that over and over again with Ricky Pearsall, and I was like, oh, that's. That's something I haven't seen them do before. Mm -hmm. They also went back to doing the, you know, uh, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle from the backfield behind the quarterback the with shuffle, CMC. The yeah, motion, they were yeah. doing that more and more again just to try to get, I guess, a running start off the line for CMC. I, I don't know. I saw some wrinkles that were new. In the first half, I saw predictable runs from, you know, first and goal from the, the 10 or, you know, first and 10 from the 11 or whatever. They, they keep running the ball on that first down, and it's like you, you got to throw it into the end zone. 10 points in that first half, and they should have been up at least 10 under tomorrow night to play the dubs. And we'll be celebrating his return by wearing these Captain Clay hats. That's right. Let me put mine on. Ooh, fits perfectly. This is a nice little hat right here. And what's going to happen is this, folks, when you attend this game. Now, let me add that we're going to give away some jerseys tomorrow in the 8 o'clock hour, 12 p.m. hour, and the 4 p.m. hour. So make sure you're locked in all day to win a Clay Thompson jersey. It go to State Warriors Clay Thompson jersey, of course. But what's going to happen tomorrow at tip-off, basically, or right before tip-off, is everybody in the crowd who receives this hat, all 18,000-plus will receive a Clay Thompson hat. And what's going to happen is right before or there's going to be a video tribute or whatnot, but what is going to happen is everybody's going to take off their Captain Clay hat, take it off, and we're going to salute it. We're going to salute in the direction of Clay Thompson. Right in the direction of Clay Thompson, kind of tip our cap to him with our Captain Clay hats. He'll get a video tribute. He'll get a steady ovation. And so everybody's going to receive this cool hat and show some love to Captain Clay as he returns to the Bay Area. We have some sound on that, which we'll play a little bit later it's Clay Thompson, I'll preface it by saying he just stinks. It's another day at the office. We'll get to that a little bit later, but 
It'll be a lot of love for Klay Thompson, and then the ball will tip off, and guys like Jerry Green will look to run through his chest and get a win over the Dallas Mavericks in the Emirates NBA Cup. The Emirates NBA Cup, which begins Tuesday night. And all the NBA referees have Emirates now on, the, on their, yeah. their uniforms on the back and whatnot. A lot of money. Um, today of money. is also, I know we're going to have Baldy here in a couple of minutes, but um, just... Uh, you know, today is Veterans Day. It is it's Veterans a veteran Day. holiday. Yeah. Uh, I forgot. Wait, wait, wait. You know it's a holiday? Why are we working? Because everybody the, else is off. Because this isn't isn't work when you're, you know. How do you like that, Mr. Coming Monday? in on a Monday for a Niner game. Oh, wait, wait, uh, but, get up uh, at 430. Honoring at all four. of the, the military um, right. individuals that have volunteered and put their life on the line. So thank you to all the veterans out yeah, there. Thanks, Vets. Um, you know, originally started because of World War II. Or World War One, excuse me. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you to all the veterans out there. Like, salute to you guys. Yeah, you no make doubt. this country what it is. Man, I, I I love that. I love that. Happy Veterans Day. I'm still. Do we get to bank home a holiday, though, for later on? Like, for working Oh, that day? I don't know. Do we get to bank in. They call it rolling holidays. Like, yeah, yeah. Rolling holidays. Maybe I'll just take a random Wednesday off one day. Maybe Jay so takes a random, <laughs> random holiday off next week. And <laughs> so, they bring Carlson back. You, you, need, you, need, you need Jake Moody. You need Jake Moody. He's missed four kicks on the year, three yesterday. We need Jake Moody. Well, Sebastian Janikowski was a guy. No, no, I'm asking. He was inconsistent as hell. No, but but he had a huge leg because like Moody does have a quote unquote booming leg. Like that was the whole like sell job on on Jake Moody. Um, the Seabass era because I wasn't a Raider fan, but I just from afar I was always fascinated by him. Obviously, lefty. Um, was he just like he was good from sixty plus, but anything in inside he was all over the place. Fifty plus, he was damn near money every time, but okay. it was those like intermediate ones where you gotcha. felt like it's kind of similar to Jake Moody actually. Those like yeah. intermediate ones where it's just like 46, 47. I was like, ah. I don't know. I'd feel I'd like in the Super Bowl. I felt more comfortable hitting him like the fifty-five plus I ones. Too. I was like, yeah, he's got these. But it's those chip shots that are like you're even seeing with Justin Tucker a little bit yeah. lately, which yeah. is just like. And a caller made the point, the 50-yarder plus this season, I think, is like the most ever, like most makes ever in a really? season so far for kickers uh, kicking 50 yards or more. But below that, I feel like it's not where it usually is. I need to look into that. I'll get you guys the numbers. Yeah, Je- Jenikowski is very inconsistent. He'd drive you crazy. Great leg. Remember, what was he? A third-round pick, too, right? He was a first-round pick. No, first-round pick. pick out of Florida, Florida State. State. First-round yeah. pick. Him and they Brady. Him first yeah. round pick. He was in the same draft for Joey yeah. Porter, right? Yeah. Not Joey Porter, Jerry Porter from West Virginia, the wide receiver. So he drafted as Brady. Sorry, right. yes. Yeah. So, uh, Jedikowski was this. So, I'm, I'm not cut. I'm not here to say cut Jake Moody right now. Let, let, let's see how this plays out over the next month. Let's see how it plays out over the next month before we start cutting kickers and cutting players around here. Tony is Santa Rosa. Tony, what's happening? Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Ask you, are you wearing a sweater from uh, Homage? Oh, yeah. Okay, I got that same one. That looks nice on you. Thank you. I just wanted to say, uh, as far as uh, Debo, I don't care about the whole Peppers thing. I understand it. Amber Slaring, but just because you guys are, you know, you guys see everything. Does Debo just not look as explosive as he used to be? Just even the little plays out of the backfield and the little packages and special plays and stuff like that. I thought he had a big play in the second half. You guys? Uh, no, I, I thought he had a – well, first off, they did the end around early in the game. Thought it looked like normal Debo. Then later on in the game, I want to say it was the second or third to last drive. He had a big-time catch over the middle right. and, and, and run. I would say the big area for me is I, I'm not seeing the tunnel screens where he breaks multiple tackles and then goes – you know, 40 or 50 yards. That that just is a little few and far between. But I think that's more of a byproduct of teams know when he catches the ball on the perimeter, you better gang tackle him. It's also, too, Tony, is that he was on the injury report with an oblique and ribs. So mm. we don't know how mm. banged up he is. He's been in and out of the lineup. He's banged up. So I'm with you. He doesn't look quite as explosive, but he's got a lot of stuff going on with his body right now, Tony. Okay, that might be it. And I just want to say, uh, Juwan Jennings, Third and Jawan, I think we need to give him way more credit than people do. I have always have, but uh, he's not just a third down receiver. He's not just a possession receiver. He's a dog. That man is a dog. I think he needs more touches, more targets. I think he showed it. I'm not saying he's a top receiver in the league, but I think he needs way more credit than he no, deserves. He fits. He fits. No doubt about it. He fits. Let's go to uh, Duke of San Bruno. Duke, what's happening? 
Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Um, well, that win felt like a loss, but <laughs> hey, we'll take it. It really it felt like a uh, loss. I thought it would yeah, felt like a win. Like a I pumped my fist like loss, yesterday. Man. I was fired up. I was fired up no, about no, that anyway, win. Listen, now this is why I'm calling. Uh, 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 Gary Radnich might get this reference, and maybe Joe Shasky's dad. Um, I'm getting Bruce Gossett vibes <sighs> from Moody, and. He makes him win. It doesn't matter, and he misses him when it counts. Yeah, he made one at the end of the end of the game. Wait, 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 wait. So, Duke, I love you. So you say he makes him when it doesn't count, but he misses him when it does matter. When he made the if game with a, a field goal, he made the did, game with a field goal did, yesterday. But I'm saying, no, but I'm saying though, if that was a blowout, he would have been six for six. He would have made every single field goal. That's all there is to it. Here's here's where I'm going with this. I think the 49ers. They need to have a, a they need to have a kicking competition right now because I don't think Moody is your number one guy. Who's the guy that we were playing? We were playing with Vegas Money the week before. I can't remember Anderson or Andrew Anders Carlson. Carlson. Yeah, the same guy, the same you guy know, who missed a forty plus forty four yard kick in a divisional round this, game at Levi all Stadium. I'm saying, all I'm saying is get those guys out on the practice field, head to head. Whoever's making the most, whoever's kicking the farthest, that's your guy you got to run with because. Hey. You know, I get it. You drafted Moody. He's your guy. Blah blah blah. But man, he's he, you can't you cannot Duke. admit that he's got he's got a record. Hey, hey Duke. I mean, he's got Duke. A, Anders yeah. Carlson is the same kicker that had Matt Lafleur pl- praying for every attempt of his last season. Literally, pl- the head coach admitted to praying when he was lining up to kick a field goal. So it's just it's just life in the NFL. Kicker's going to be they're going to be erratic at times. Is Bruce Gossett the guy that was uh, the Bruce kicker Dawson. during? What? He said Bruce Dawson. No, Gossett. I think it's Bruce Gossett. Gossett. He was the Rams yeah. kicker. But I know that the Niners had him. He was the guy who missed the two kicks against the Cowboys in the early 70s, right? You got it. Absolutely. Bruce, Bruce Gossett. way back. Jackie, your, dad, your dad probably yelled at the TV <laughs> and made up cuss words about Bruce Gossett. Yeah, hey, I'm looking at some numbers here. In 19, he's not Bruce Gossett. He's 16 to 20 right now. Well, in 1966, kick- Bruce Gossett was 28 of 49 when it came to field goal attempts. Yeah, but that was also 28 to 49, dog. Unsophisticated and unrefined <laughs> era of yeah, kicking. I can don't we, give a damn. The that? next year, he missed 23 kicks. 20 of 43. No, we- the year after that, he was 17 to 31. The year after that, he was 22 and 34. 1970, he was 21 to 31. 1971, he was 23 and 36. 1972, he was 18 to 29. But his Let's, point, no. But his point was, I think it, for the the seventies Niners. I'm, I'm, right, I, hear you. I, I know that they had a game where they missed multiple kicks. It wasn't the onside game. It was another one. They missed multiple kicks, and I believe he was the kicker at the time. No, he was a kicker, no doubt. Take, I mean, a, let's go by Kofer. Let's game. go by Kofer before we go to Bruce Gossett. Bruce Gossett was. I'm looking at the numbers now. He looks like one of the worst kickers in NFL history. But again, you got to go back to the era. No, I hear you. Kick well in that era. I hear you. Now it's I hear a lot you. more refined. No, I hear you. I mean, Chase I McLaughlin, you. who had the worst kick I've ever seen in my life on a Monday night game against Seattle, was the kicker for Tampa Bay yesterday. No, I know. I understand. I understand. He made the game winning field goal. Did you get some love for that? Jake Moody, by the way, now, uh, if we're just going by. F- Percentage, he's now 30th in the NFL among qualifying kickers with right 80%. Now? Yeah. We 60 to 20? Yeah. Him and Jake Elliott tied at 80%. I'm so he missed you, four s- kicks and he's 30th? Yeah. Wow. Damn. Kickers have been good this year. I, 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 I guess. I don't know the numbers on kicking anymore. We act, look, look. I do think I scoff at people who think that 55 yards is just automatic. Like, no. Like, hey, I'm a Niner easy. fan. None of these kicks are automatic. Well, None of these punt returns I, I, are automatic. None of these punt return I coverages just, are automatic. We are the worst special teams. Like, we are a bottom five special teams. I can't get over the fact that Duke said he felt like they lost a the game yesterday. No, trust me. If they lost a the game yesterday, you would feel a loss. <laughs> you would feel it on this show. So Shanahan said, brothers fight. They'll deal with it on a plane. We can agree it was a bad look <laughs> yeah. for any team, but at the same time. But you know what? I, I, I'm not mad at Jerry it. Jerry Rice was just talking about exactly. this three weeks ago. Exactly. And let me see some fire. You know what? Debo had to check somebody. I mean. Hey, our damn legacies are on the line. The West is on the line. You're out here missing kicks, 49, 50, 40, whatever the hell it is. Make a damn kick. We need a win. We're desperate coming off a of bye. We come out here playing with the ribs and the oblique injury. God, Lord knows what's going on with his shoulders. I'm with Debo Samuel on this one. Now, I don't like, you know, judo chopping, you know, <laughs> Tabor Pepper in the neck or, you know, throat slide. Like, I don't like, you know, whatever it is. But you know what? Sometimes guys got to get checked. 
and Debo had to check somebody to wake Moody's game up. Yo, we're out here in 90 degree heat, busting our ass, trying to get a win here, and you're out here missing kicks left and right. You got one job. Yeah. One job. Do it. One job. All right, let's go to uh, Manny on the door, Barton Prince. What's happening? I'm fired up right now, man. It's, this, is, this is what I'm talking about. Even in college football, you're starting to see the cream rise to the top. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to Manny and Barton Prince. What's up? What up, fellas? Good morning to y'all. Before I begin, I just want to wish my fellow brothers in arms happy Veterans Day, man. Thank you guys for your service. Second of all, um, I'm going to cut right to it. I went down the rabbit hole, and I'm looking at all the list of 49ers kickers, man. My favorite one is Wade Ritchie, or as I call him, Wide Right <laughs> Chief. And, uh, look, I, I understand the heat that Moody's getting, but I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass. I, I, and this is coming off of the heels of what you just said, Bonte, because touching on what Debo did, hey, you know what? Richie or uh, Moody wasn't coming up on you on the Super Bowl when you were stinking up the place. So let's be fair. Mm. Moody's coming off an injury. The wind played into it. I'm going to say this. You know, it pained me to see, to see Nick Fairbarn hitting all those field goals last night, but it brought my spirits up when I could see Jared Goff have a bad game and throw five picks. My point to this is this, Niner fans. He had a bad game. Three field goals, and he made the one that counted. And this – is what I want to call dig into. It was a dog fight. Anybody that wants to dismiss the Bucks haven't been watching the Bucks. The Bucks yeah. are a damn good team. And for the Niners to, as ugly as it was, to stick through it, and there were bright points here and there with Pierce. Or with, oh my God, with Kittle. I, I mean, I don't know what he's on, but I want it because I'm getting old and I need that kind of pet to my step. But that that was a dog fight. They pulled through it. It was you know winner take all. And Moody got it where it counted. I'm not going to, I mean, there were so, there, I'm not going to focus on the negative. I'm going to focus on all the bright spots. Right. Purdy plays well. Pierce All is showing what he's going to bring us now and heading into the future. And you know what? They, they spoke about it yesterday. Shanahan's teams struggle early in the, in the season for God only yeah. knows why. <laughs> Coming out of the bye in the second half, they blow up. And and look at the they, they actually had a graphic of it yesterday. Right, he is damn near invincible when it comes to the second half of the season. And if this team has a fight in them throughout the rest of the year that they showed yesterday, then damn, I'm yeah. back on saying that we headed back to the show. Hey, well, I, I'm gonna relax on that one on the show. They just win a damn division. Yeah, they win a damn that, game next week against Seattle. But you know what? This is a game they don't win before the bye week. Before the bye week. Before the bye week, they don't win that game. They lose that football game yesterday. They found a way to win a damn game. Down 17-13, kickers missing kicks left and right. You hold the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You force a punt. You get a great return from Calvin. You get great throws from Brock Purdy. The excellence in the fourth quarter. That's in money time. It wasn't pretty for Brock, but damn it, when I needed him to make a throw in the fourth quarter with our season on the line, Brock Purdy made throws. This quarterback... That the Niners have right now, Brock Purdy, deserves a ton of credit. This guy's balling, man. And I feel like we got somebody here. Again, fourth quarter. It's hot. It's humid. Kickers missing kicks left and right. Special teams is blooded. Defense is missing tackles. Bickers got all the time in the world. Bucky Irvin is cooking in the run game. And the quarterback found a way to make the throws when you needed him to make throws in the fourth quarter. I feel good about I don't know why I feel so good about this win. One timeout, less than 50 seconds to go in the game. They marched the distance that they needed to go. And not only did they use the timeout in the middle of the field, which was smart, they spiked the ball. Yep. So it was kind of like a chaotic play. And mm -hmm. I've been telling you, like I kind of want these chaos situations at the end because you learn more about a quarterback during no those chaotic moments when, when things aren't going well. And I believe they blitzed him on three of those passes, mm -hmm. those pass attempts. The only incompletion was the spike mm -hmm. on that drive. I think also one of the big, like if the headliner is CMC returns or whatever, the biggest development on offense, it's not that Purdy was awesome because – we know he's really good. It's not that Kittle was awesome. We know he's really good. It's that I think Ricky Pierce also a player. Oh, well, so you know like, what? I think that's the big takeaway. When you lose well. Brandon Ayuk, most Niner fans are like, even if you think Ayuk is overpaid, you're like, damn, dude, we're out one of the dynamic playmakers in the NFC. And then Ricky Pierce steps in, and I'm not saying he looked a lot like Ayuk. That's not fair because no. it's it's early. But you could see what Kyle saw in him to say, we're taking you in the first round. 
getting open on zone coverages, tougher than you think, catch radius, tough to bring down, yards after catch. That catch he made, not on the out route, the one on the the delay yeah. on that final drive. Yeah. That's a tough catch up in the air, slightly behind. I think Ricky Pearsall's a player. He caught two passes on the final drive. And midway through the third quarter, I was begging for more targets for Kittle and Pearsall. Really? You were this, that? Yeah. Really? I, I, this is a massive development with Ricky Pearsall. This guy's got a chance to be a big-time factor. When you so have a catcher run like that on a 46-yarder on a great throw from Brock Purdy with some mustard on it over the middle of the field, and you could catch a run like that and make something ha happen like that, that, that's the yak we've been waiting for yeah. this season. That's the yak that's been missing. That's actually a good point. This guy may be a player here. We may have something here at Ricky Pearsall. This is a massive development. Now, I want to see him stack weeks here. But with Juwan Jennings playing the X now mm. and doing what he did yesterday, Debo underneath, McCaffrey's back in the fold. And you can't say enough about George Kittle. The play, the touchdown play, I can't get over it. It's just on my screen. The dead leg, Brock the way Purdy. he, but the way George kind of contorted oh, yeah. his body, it was so good. He's high pointed the football and used his heads a lot more this season than any. I think he's having the best year of his career, personally. I, I don't give a damn what the numbers no, say. I'm with you. From yeah. a production standpoint in the run game and the pass game, and, I don't think George Kittle's played better. And when the big plays happen. Oh, so he's to me, it's up. like when they're happening. Like, hey, we need somebody to step up oh. here. How many times have you said, oh, this kid will play, flip the game? Oh, the 30-yarder over the middle where he's dragging defenders left and oh, right. Man. And you hear the roar of the Niner fans. As Baldy said, there's a lot of Niner fans down there in Tampa Bay. Niners knew they couldn't let those fans who took the cross-country flight all the way to Tampa Bay, they knew they couldn't let them down. So this was a gritty damn win. I like gritty wins like this. I, like, when did we get spoiled around here thinking that we're just going to blow everybody out? The last this five is years. the NFL. The Niners have been the class of the NFC. So when the Niners come to town, teams know they got to bring their hard hats on. And they got to play. They got to play. It's pause. Hashtag pause. They got to play their asses off. And that's what Tampa Bay did yesterday. Listen, Tampa Bay is a tough team. They beat Philadelphia even though they were short-handed. They took Kansas City in the overtime. That's a tough team over there to tie both coaches. So I'm happy with this win. But Again, to, Kittle and Purdy in the fourth quarter. Oh, my gosh. And Pearsall, there's a development here happening. But to your point, like, okay, I get your point about since when do we start grading on a curve? Uh, since the nineties. Yeah, well, this ain't that, the nineties. I know, but that's this ain't what the nineties. You guys can't. No, 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 no. Because a lot of people told me it can't be Super Bowl or bust when I mentioned the nineties, and I say, well, that's my mentality. Listen, I get it. Style points weren't great yesterday. They wasn't. But you know what the state say to this morning? Five and four, forty niners. Two wins in a row. That's what the standings say. Yeah, there's no ugly win column. No. Did, I need, did you watch the NFL yesterday? I know. Anybody? Do you think Minnesota Viking fans? They're going crazy right now. They got to win 12-7. to seven, yeah. And it was ugly as hell. I know. It was about the Lions. You think Lion fans right now are complaining? I still can't believe that guy hit that kick. Twice. I couldn't believe that. Twice. Big kicks. Twice. And he's wearing an odd number. I think he's 35. Is Bates 35? Yeah, 35 kicker? or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm so, actually we're here buy for the, the odd numbered kickers. Uh, you think Baltimore's going to complain about that win against Cincinnati? No. 35-34? No. With Joe Burrow's throwing for over 400 yards? No. And shredding you left and right with Jamar Chase? He, here's the, the big thing for me on the Purdy, because you've been talking to Purdy, but I'm so glad you are. There was the fumble, obviously. But no turnover-worthy throws. Yeah. That is the big one. There was one where he missed Jennings early in the game right, over the middle. High. The ball bounced yep. in the air off the receiver's hand. That was a poor throw. He had a couple other high and late throws. I thought one of them was deliberate on the Pearsall right. out because I thought that the, the cornerback was all over it. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, once he settled in in the second half, I thought he was brilliant. Mm -hmm. No doubt. He was brilliant. I, I was his fourth quarter. When you need a little bit of fourth quarter, he stepped up in the fourth quarter. All right, let's get to BP and SF. And then we got some other heavy hitters on the All line right. that we'll get heavy to. Hitters? BP in the city. What's happening, BP? How you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we got you, BP. Can you hear me okay? All right. Uh, love you guys. I listen to you guys every morning. I'm just like, I, I, when you brought up clock, clock management, I agree with you totally. And I was wondering if you guys can ask, ask Shanahan, what it is with clock management at the end of the half? <laughs> Why don't they throw it deep? Draw penalty. They had three, three, three timeouts. They did the same thing. The first Super Bowl he coached. The second Super Bowl, the same thing. He has this thing about running the clock out. If it was Mahomes, he he'd run eighty yards in twenty seconds. You know, he throw it up. He, you know, so this, uh, the clock management at the end of the half is killing me. Look, I, I've been on this. I've been on this all year because I was I was more like making excuses for Shanahan for a while. <laughs> He's a brilliant play caller. The clock management isn't just bad. 
What, what it's else? downright it, atrocious. What, you know, BP, the, the clock manager first half, this goes back to Super Bowl 54. It's downright atrocious. It? It's just, I don't even, I try not to even get upset about well, it anymore, It's BP. indefensible. BP, you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you no. Yeah, yeah, we got you, man. We got you. No, you're right about the clock management. Yeah, you got yeah. anything else? Oh, yeah, no, I love the way, uh, well, first of all, I love you, Bonte. You the man. And, you know, Shasky, you too. And like I said, I listen to you guys every day. Thank you. And Ricky Pearsall impressed me yesterday. Yep. And I thought uh, I, th- I thought uh, Purdy had some touch passes that won to uh, to uh, to McC- McCaffrey uh, along the sideline. That was yeah. a very nice touch pass. And I want to give I'm going to give Jake Moody a pass only because of the wind. He talked yep. about the wind after the game, and uh, I'm going to give him a pass yeah. because Harbaugh used to call him money. So I think he's going to get – he always has that one bad game. Last year he had that one bad game, and then he straightened himself out. Yeah. No doubt. You know, it, it's funny. Something not to cut you off. We asked Baldy about the win, and he said there was a lot of win at the end of the end zone, and Moody was missing kicks in the pregame. I don't get – did Shanahan even get asked a question about no. Moody and the conditions? on Because that's the first thing I thought about. Okay, if he didn't kick the 57-yarder in the first quarter, because I was sitting there thinking, okay, you're on the brink. It's his first game back. You don't kick it. I had no problem with that. But I always think about this. What were the conditions in the pregame warm-ups? When I'm watching kickers in pregame warm-ups, I'm seeing, are they kicking from the left half? Are they kicking from the right hash? Are they kicking from the 35, the 40? Are they making them? Are they hitting the uprights? Are they wide left, wide right? I, I don't know what the hell people are asking these days. I don't know. I'm not going to get on the media about that. No, no, but, no, but here, here's why we'll, we'll step in here. Like, um, they missed this field goal. So it's 13-17. Um, and Kittle made a really nice pa- uh, play um, where he's just breaking tackles, mm-hmm. and then they get down to, like, the 32. And then uh, just a horrific pull from from Moody. Uh, the, the, off the leg, it looked bad from the jump, okay, mm-hmm. whether there was wind involved or not. Then the defense gets a huge stop. Huge stop. And after Cowan had already been ran into and fumbled, I thought Jacob Cowan on his best return of the season. And it instantly brought life to the entire sideline. And I, I, I do want to, like – dwell on some of the positives from this one. Cowing having that return, he's got juice. He's got speed. Is he a gadget guy? Probably, right? There's a spot for him. Like, I I, I, I like Cowing. I want to see him get some looks in this offense. Well, you know what? Shanahan is going to go to the guys he trusts. That's just how he does it. All right. Let's go to BPA. Brian in Palo Alto. Hey, good morning. Uh, Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Um, Hey, we're excited, excited about the Warriors. <laughs> um, I think that, yeah, everything I said last week, you know, this is no evidence this is a good team. I think that was backed up yesterday. There's no evidence it's a good team nine weeks in, and that's okay, right? They're not going to win the Super Bowl every year. But, um, yeah, I just think, to me, the, you know, the guy that picked Brock Purdy over Trey Lance would not have Jake Moody as his kicker today and probably would do something about Brian Schneider at special team spot. And that to me is my biggest criticism of Kyle is he's just not calling balls and strikes the way he used to. And he's, you know, making decisions based on how do the optics look for him. Uh, and that's it. That's my only take, but uh, otherwise, uh, yeah. Wow. That's an interesting, like I'll marinate on that for a second. The interesting cop of like the guy who picked Brock Purdy over Trey Lance, meaning we're ditching this high draft pick because this guy's just better. Like there's an element. I, I see where he's coming from on that. I would just say that I'm not ready to throw out Moody after one horrific game. Now you could say Joey's had a couple of big misses and he's also has a bunch of big makes. I mean, he, he won this team a playoff game with his leg in the rain against green Bay in some bad conditions where the backup guy who you had last week missed a, uh, a field goal. So, I think it goes both ways. Now, here's what I would say. If he has one more game even closely resembling this one, all right, now now we can have the conversation. I'm just not there yet, but I'm not mad at people having that conversation. Let's go to Steve in San Rafael. Steve, what's happening? You know what I would have loved to have seen, guys, is the Niners lose. You know why? It would have put Kyle Shanahan in the position of having to pick Debo or Moody, and of course he'd pick Debo, and Moody would be off the team today. That would have happened. (laughs) But Jawan Jennings luckily picked up a fumble that Purdy dropped, which, of course, you didn't see Debo running up to Brock Purdy and hitting him in the head, telling him how he messed up, right? right. Steve, no, you I, didn't see that. I, I got to rewind yeah. something. I got to rewind something. Did you just say that you would have rather seen him loss? 
lose yesterday just so Moody could be off the team? 100%. Even though the season would have been over? I wanted to hear more of that. <laughs> it's like, you ever watched one of those like D-rated movies that are so bad Oh, they're yeah, good? they're good. Oh, yeah, That's there's a lot of those. That's what that take was. I kind of wanted to hear more. Eight to ten weeks, but you know what? That's a loaded roster. And beggars can't be choosers. And the Warriors right now are rolling, stacking W's. And there's a lot to like. There's a lot to love. Now, they got blown out Friday night in Cleveland. And, you know, 650 Comcast Business Tech Sign has been coming at me about the starting lineup. But I will I will concede this. The Warriors, one of the worst teams in terms of points per quarter in the first quarter. So points per first quarter, the Warriors are on a list with the Blazers, the Spurs, some of the bad teams, the Wizards, averaging just over 26 points a game or 26 points in the first quarter. So, yes, they have gotten off the slow starts, 14-3 in Boston. Of course, in Cleveland, they're down 20-2. to um, The first game of the season at Portland, they couldn't buy a basket. Utah was clunky. Hell, they were down 34-14 to the Pelicans on the first game of the doubleheader. So, slow starts has, has been a problem. But I think Steve Kerr found something yesterday with the starting lineup. DeAnthony Melton gets his first start of the season. And this is what we kind of anticipated in training camp. Can he be that two guard next to Stephen Curry? Because I like Buddy Hill's role off the bench. I don't want him. I want him coming off the bench. I love that role for him with the second unit alongside J.K. And I think we have a development there with J.K. and Buddy Hill coming in with the second unit. That could be a problem for opposing teams. But having D'Anthony Melton, who's a lifetime 37% three-point shooter, who could defend as well, I like him next to Stephen Curry because you need a little more offense with that starting unit to give Steph a little more spacing to operate because when you do have a front line of Draymond and TJD, teams are going to dare them to shoot. And Wiggins right now, his three ball wasn't rolling up until yesterday. So I like this unit moving forward here with DMT Melton, Steve Kerr mentioned yesterday that they're going to roll with this five for the foreseeable future. So I'm sure a lot of people tuned in to portions of Friday night's game and was like, oh, this one's over. And, and maybe they disconnected. Maybe they did family night. Maybe maybe they stuck around like I did. I watched the whole game Friday night, and I loved the way that they battled. And in these games that you lose where there's a blowout, sometimes things can happen that carry over. I thought Melton's first game back in that game and his ability to make a couple of plays, some middies off the backboard, I was like, oh, this is a silver lining. Kaminga making some plays in the Cleveland game. I was like, ooh, right. this is a silver lining. And I thought both guys carried that over into mm-hmm. the game yesterday. Yep. I thought Andrew Wiggins battled his you-know-what off yesterday Andrew on Wiggins the glass. Is, Andrew Wiggins has been fine this season. No, uh, he's been he, he had than a little bit of slump on the road trip, 4-19 from three. But yesterday he goes 2-4 from the three-point line, but eight rebounds, five assists. And it's not just the— Activity. It's, it's not, yeah, exactly. It's the energy and activity. Yeah. He's defending his ass off. And— I love that Steve Kerr, understanding that OKC was going small yesterday, kind of yep. was like, yeah, Looney and TJD, like, love you. This is not a great matchup for you. Well, TJD didn't start the second half. GP2 did. Yeah. And Looney didn't play a second yesterday. But, so you're playing in the matchup. Exactly. You're playing to the matchup. what I wanted him to do. So, so that's what he did yesterday. JK with 14 of his 20 in the first half yesterday. And when he's getting downhill and he's attacking the basket. Now, I love the two threes where he settled in and mm-hmm. shot a couple threes. But when he's attacking, five more rebounds yesterday for J.K. This role for him with Buddy Hield and J.K. and GP2, those are your first three guys off the bench. Now, we got to figure out Pods' jump shot right now. He's struggling with the jump shot, and we'll get there. He'll have his time. Lindy Waters has also hit a bit of a slump here ever since he lit up the Pelicans. But you get J.K. and Buddy Hield there, and you get GP2, and the minutes you're getting from Moody is very productive. I got something cooking here. Now maybe Steve Kerr starting to pare down his rotation just a bit. Now, these were, I did the math, so it, I could be wrong. Since becoming a reserve, I've got over 17 points a game for Jonathan Kaminga and almost 52% shooting from the field since becoming a quote-unquote reserve player. Right. He's not part of the first five. Uh, okay. But if I told you he's going to average close to 18 points a game on 50-plus shooting, wouldn't everyone be like, yeah, we'll take that? I mean, even in the blowout against Cleveland. I thought he was JK attacking. On the the Warriors look slow in that game. They're getting blown by left and right. Garland killed Garland him. and Mitchell got two feet in the paint all night long. Jared Mobley Allen. Mobley and Allen's length and size really Mobley bothered the Warriors in the half court. They wouldn't let the Warriors breathe. They couldn't get an open shot, man. That was as impressive of a win I've seen all season. Cleveland took it to the Warriors. They're still undefeated. And their problem with Kenny Atkinson. Uh-huh. But I thought Kaminga was the one guy on the Warriors who looked like he belonged on the same floor. Mm. He looked like he belonged on the same floor. With 
Cleveland with the speed and athleticism. So, look, there's a role for him on his team. I don't know. Like, after the Boston game, I saw a tweet that blew up, and somebody tagged me, and for what reason, I have no idea. But they beat Boston, and the first thing is, so can you imagine what the team's going to look like when they trade J.K.? Everybody's so quick. Jason just told you. What are we doing? Everybody was, Rome wasn't built in a day. We just want to trade, but to your point, since he's shifted to the bench. J.K., 17.5 points a game, 52.7% from the floor, and 45% from three. And I asked everybody. Yeah, 45% from three. I didn't have that. As well as, what is he doing on the glass? Well, now that there's an uptick in rebounds, he's averaging five rebounds a game Mm. off the glass in these past six games. So J.K. is playing well in this role. Andrew Wiggins, but it was the return to Chef. 7-13 Seven to thirteen from three, thirty six points, seven assists, five rebounds, and he's played at such an unbelievable level but right now. Don't you think that having Melton alongside of him, who oh. contributed with nineteen, ten, and two assists and three steals, a like the size is there, and then you have another ball handler. He was hitting the middies, yep. and then he obviously had. I think he had five threes yesterday. Mm-hmm. But to me, it was the defense. He yeah. was so aware off ball. He jumped multiple passing lanes and either forced a, a pass to a different direction or just stole the ball. Yeah. I think Melton alongside Curry is kind oh, of an yeah. unlocker. Well, this is the starting lineup that I assume was going to happen before what trading camp was over. But Steve Kerr wanted to go a little bigger, and he went with athleticism and size with Kaminga, Wiggins, and TJD, and Draymond. And obviously, you needed a little more shooting there. Anthony Bell just lifetime 37% three-point shooter. The only problem is this is his back, yeah. right? He missed five games with the back injury. He missed 44 last year in the regular season with Philadelphia. Played in only one playoff game for Philadelphia. So if his back holds up and you're getting, you're not going to get 19 points every no, night, but no, if you no, get no. 12 to 15 exactly. and you're getting 10 rebounds from this guy who can guard at a high level. Now, he's not GP2 in terms of defending, but he had a big drop off no, from GP2 to Melton. He's no, he's a problem exactly. at the point of attack defensively. So the Warriors did their thing yesterday. They outscored OKC in the second and third quarters, eighty-one to forty-six. Eighty-one to forty-six. Shaft game went fourteen to twenty-four from three. So when we recap the road trip, four and one on this five-game roadie. When you think about when they entered the Boston game, their next three opponents was twenty-two and one. Yeah. They beat Boston. They beat OKC. And I don't give a damn if they're shorthanded or not. These were good no, quality I'm, wins. But I think the common denominator, again, I, could it be an outlier? Sure. But the common denominator in the two wins, I don't fear the bigs on OKC with no Chet and no Hartenstein. Yeah. Right? Like yep. So they don't have a big. And then against Boston, like Horford is a— He's 38 just, years old. That's what I'm saying. And they didn't have Porzingis. But against Cleveland, what did they have? They had a young stud in the middle who's a dynamic athlete. Mm-hmm. And I, I I just, look, I love these wins. I am not trying to poo-poo them at all. No. But there will be a time when you're going to need TJD and Looney and maybe no another doubt. big no doubt. to be able to slow down these bigs. So I, I, I'm so encouraged by what it is. Now, I'm very interested. A, the Chet injury is huge. What does it look like with Hartenstein with that team? Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know. know. I, I, I don't legitimately know. don't know. It could fit. It could not fit. Well, look. He was a rugged player for the Knicks. The Warriors are going to have a stretch from December 6th to December 21st where they played in Minnesota Timberwolves three times. Oof. All right? Nas Reed and Gobert. And, and Gobert, yeah. Ugh. But I bring that up because let me list these next 10 games off. Give them to me. I believe they're 10. If I'm doing my math correctly, that's three. That's 11 games. Next 11. Dallas tomorrow night. We know that's a big one. Memphis Friday without John Morant, possibly. He's week to week with, <laughs> he's got hip, pelvic, I, get, dude's banged up. Then they play the Clippers in L.A. They had to come back home for Grant Liffman's Hawks. Then you have a double dip, a back-to-back against the Pelicans and the Spurs. Then they play Brooklyn at home. Then you play OKC without Chet. Then you go to Phoenix, and who knows if Kevin Durant will be back by November 30th. If he has a calf strain. Yeah, I'm going to say no. Even though they're saying two weeks, I'm going to say no. Then you get a nice little two-day break before you play Denver in a Mile High City. And then you play the Houston Rockets back at home. So these next 11 games. It's pretty favorable. These next 11 games. You know, they're 8-2 and two now. What if they're 19-6? and six? Oh, well, then you know what's going to happen. What if they no wait that that doesn't occur eleven games? What if they're say if they go seven and four in those eleven? Okay, so all of a sudden they're fifteen and six. Well, if they get to sixteen and six, 
Then you we're know, saying out loud, exactly. Shask and I, that we both believe this team could make a deep run to the playoffs. Absolutely. <laughs> then I'll believe. Now, I already think that there's something in the air, Phil Collins. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, this Warrior team is legit. And if teams want to go small with us, we're going to run them out of the gym. Yeah, you can't play small with them. No. You like, the only small. way to beat us is going big. Like, well, not, not, not the only way. One of the ways to beat us currently is, like, having the bigs. And, like, Evan Mobley's so unique. How many teams have that yeah, guy? Not a lot of teams have that guy. But you know what I'm noticing? He's so good. Cleveland, they had tipped a 42 threes. That was a season high for them Friday. Now, I don't know what they did. Really? Brooklyn. They only averaged 36 three point attempts per game. Do you think that was the inside out, or do you think but, that was? But yeah, it was. It was the blow bys, and it was inside well, Garland, out. Garland, I felt like could but, get any shot he wanted but in that think game. Think about this: Cleveland shoots going into that Warriors uh -huh. game. They were shooting 42 percent from three, 15 of 36. 42 percent tops in the league. Yeah, that's incredible. But that balance that they play with, I'm, I'm, I'm saying here, you look at Boston wasn't balanced last year. Obviously, they were efficient from the three point mm -hmm. line, but I think you could beat them. The New York Knicks are starting to get back to balance. Mid-range, layups, yeah. and then some threes. It's about we'll the matchups. It's about matchups, but it's also about having some balance within your offense. Yeah, that's true. You can't live and die by the three. You got to go inside out here at times. And so Cleveland's ability to go inside out, and you get two guards in Mitchell and Garland. And not to mention, Karis LeVert off the bench is a problem. And I'll give you credit. They didn't even have Max, Max Struess. Max Struess destroyed the Warriors last year. My oh, guy. They did Ty Jerome. Ty Jerome. Ty Jerome actually miss. looked good. Could miss. He looked good. Somewhere, Steve Kerr was So smiling. not everybody's going to be Cleveland, but, man, Cleveland looks good. No, Cleveland you know, looks incredible. They we look incredible. Say. They look incredible. But but here's the thing, B. Like, but 82, you, man. You were talking about balanced floor. So, like, last night, there's little subtle plays that happened. Buddy's been so on fire from three, they overplay him, mm -hmm. right? And he goes backdoor with a Draymond bounce pass, and it's a wide-open layup. Like, little things like that are going to help them. Now, they're going to need – some of these, uh, you know, front court guys mm -hmm. scoring. There's no doubt about it. There was a moment last night where I started to worry. Yeah, of course you did. You started texting. I, I looked at my phone during our first break of the post game show. And it was like 55 missed text, and it was all from Joe Shasky. Well, and I'm I was so worried. worried. I thought something on happened. Warriors. I thought so something soon. happened. I thought something happened. I'm super happened. fired up. No, I thought but, something but happened. But I will say this. Draymahan. No, it came Draymond out of nowhere. It's like, I didn't hear from none of you guys. And then the last five minutes, I saw Shasky lose Draymond. his mind, giving us a play-by-play. -play. I didn't want to jinx it. it. Um, there was a moment in time where, obviously, the Dorcher Chamber and Draymond Green were going at it on the side. And I thought they right. made way too right. much of it, the referees. And they reviewed it for what felt like an eternity. Yeah, well, Draymond Green's involved. He's too. gone 50 games <laughs> without a flagrant. Draymond? Yes. Yeah, 10 games down, 10 <laughs> Well, I'm 55 to go, baby. You you, you weren't thinking they're going to give him even more for the elbow? Uh, yeah, of course I was. It's Draymond Green, and it's the NBA refs, and they t stopped playing. You see the replay where he flailed and but got door in the face, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. I think he's more mature. Uh, oh, and who's your guy that came to the, the middle of the table and stared into the camera? What's that referee's name? Oh, uh, Come on. Pat Freyer. Dude. I just Pat Freyer. stop with the no more screen time for these refs. I'm, so with, I'm I, with Molly I, I, on this. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take some calls here in a second, but I always want to read people, and I think they get the shows mixed up. Uh, here we go. You guys don't know ish about basketball. Oh, six six two. Don't know. I nothing. told you Kamiga was that dude. You, oh. you hug up on me. Okay. You're actually speaking to two of the biggest Kamiga fans at I the mean, station. I, come on. How many times have we been pumping up Kamiga on this show? Come on. I can't speak for other shows. But I know on this show, you're talking to the biggest Jonathan Kaminga fans there is on this show, The Morning Roast. I love JK.